Welcome to the stream. Hello, friends, enemies, splenemies, Frenemies. friendemies, gendarmes. The fuck does that mean? It's a French thing. It's, it means like police people. Anecdote. Hello. A Anakin dote. Anakin Skywanker. Um. Is that like the British you, version yeah. of Anakin Skywalker, or is that like the yeah, the porn yeah. parody version of Anakin Skywalker? It, it's a bit of both. It's a British porn parody. I didn't know the British made porn. I thought they all Neither never had I. sex in their lives. I thought the British people yeah. produ reproduced through budding, and they, like one of them just sort of pops out of the like ground plants? like a like a potato and goes, "I bruv." Guess what? Uh, Kef has another like British ball? person in it. Yeah. Are you doing love? What a shag. Oh, they God, just do that. Terrible. Are you Nobody attempting to shag. shag me? Oh, no. May I have the pleasure of shagging you? May I unsheathe my sword and place it into your ulster? What the hell are you talking about? Uh, you know. Okay, the audio is a little bit too loud, so I'm turning it down. Oh, okay. How's the chat doing? We've already point. got people. I found it on my phone. Oh, fucking link it. It's on Twitter. Fucking link it, I'm doing work, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working here! So anyway, welcome everybody to the... Uh, welcome to hell! Who, 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 what about hell? Said welcome to hell. Well, you know what else a wise man once said about hell? To go to it? Hell is other people. Uh. Oh god. Specifically, uh. it's these two other people <clears throat> on the stream. Hello. So if any of you who are watching the stream right now think that those two people in this stream are cool, likable, or interesting, or fun to hang out with, you're, you're fucking wrong. No. I don't know these people. We're so, uh, um... we're we're playing um we're playing Black Mesa because David is a stupid idiot and thought you think he downloaded Resident Evil Three. He mm -hmm. didn't actually download Resident Evil Three. He forgot. So we and have to play that he just... actually already had installed. Yeah, but hey, uh, we've already played all of the other uh Half Life games except for the one that sucks. So, why not play this one, too? Hunt down the Freeman? Yes. It really triggers me whenever people call that a Half-Life game. It is a Half-Life game. I'm gonna fucking strangle you. Listen, I'm not happy that Star Trek Nemesis is a Star Trek movie, but I'm not gonna just not gonna deny that it's a Star Trek movie. Exactly. Man, you you've been playing this. You've been playing this game for fucking three minutes, and you're already talking about Star Trek. What is wrong with you? What is, well, I what, was gonna what talk is about. Wrong with you? I was gonna problem. talk about the new Dev Patel movie, but I was gonna save that for later. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. So anyway, I was gonna some invite positive some positive buzz surrounding that movie. I haven't seen it yet. I was gonna I invite hear a lot some of people saying good things about it. I was gonna invite somebody who is uh, in this call to see that movie with me, but he was too busy doing things like and working yeah. and celebrating <laughs> birthdays. So I saw it with someone else instead. Thankfully, we're almost done with the the 
fucking glut of birthdays in April for people I'm friends with. Every everyone has a birthday in April. It's listen. It's, I was not it's going so to front loaded. Out, I was not going to out you as a bad friend like that, but you know you did it to yourself. I'm a bad friend because I kept going to my friends' birthdays. Yes. And and my wife's birthday. Yeah, you're a bad friend because you went to your wife's birthday party. <laughs> I, I, Instead I, of watching a movie with you. Listen, I skipped hey, my sorry, wife's man, birthday party. Hey, man, I can't party. watch Monkey Man with you today. I'm trying to get laid. Going to this chick's birthday party. I've been seeing her for like six years now. We're married, but um, today I think is the day. I think it's going to finally happen. Listen, I skipped my wife's birthday party, mostly because I don't have a wife, but, you know, it's the principle of the thing. It's, like, weird to remember that I'm married. Like, it's not like a... Th it's just, like, so part of my normal day that I don't think about it anymore. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, I had a wedding. And like, my friend Jackson was my best man at my wedding, and I got married. It's like, I did all that stuff. It just, I, I feel older than I am sometimes. <laughs> So crazy. anyway, I saw that an action movie walk. and it was good. Don't was there... speak over me while I'm doing my chills impression and trying to compliment my friend, you fucking freak. You're all right, all right, William, go back to your, Xavier, your chills you're just impression. Here for hey, the cloud. William, go back to your go do your chills impression, okay? You're you're. We all know that Xavier isn't actually for, the Fallout uh, a show is actually decent. I'm about three episodes in, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm actually very glad that Walton Goggins is starting to get more roles because I think he's swell. I really wish he had played Cletus Cassidy instead of Woody Harrelson, but I feel like Woody Harrelson is like more of a big name, like more of a box office draw. You know what Woody? Um, you I, know what Walton Goggins' b best role is, in my opinion. Uh. Yes. Uh, honestly, I I, th I actually think he's got a lot of great characters. Um, but what, what do you think? think what do you think my favorite Hart role of his is? is? It's gotta be some. Is it in Star Trek? Is he in a Star Trek thing? I was gonna say he uh, he played the crime boss in Ant Man Two, Ant Man and the Wasp. You know what? I'm glad that um, they wasted him on that movie so that he doesn't have to get stuck playing a shit ass character in a hundred fucking MCU movies. Um, so he he can actually do like fun stuff. So like the only thing that okay, I've saw, seen online cool. about the Fallout show is that some of the continuity in it may contradict uh, Fallout They're New Vegas, so which mad is the that they best. Didn't make the, Bethesda is so mad that they didn't make the best Fallout game. The best 3D Fallout game. Oh, here let me link the stream mm -hmm. the button so he can check the chat. But yeah, um, that's the thing, and then. Um, Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know you could do that. So I have like the Steam, uh, the Steam uh, controller, right? And yeah. I oh, can, does it have like, like that I, gyroscope? It, it has shit? like a gyroscope, and I can like l lean around with it. I didn't know I could do that. I think there's some PlayStation Three games that had that with like the six-axis controller yeah. back when motion controls were like. A back thing when, everyone back kept when insisting the, was a the thing. Wii, everybody was trying to imitate the, the Wii. Wii. Oh, Becky's Wii. here. Hello. Hello, Becky. Best sorry, we're not doing. Uh, sorry, we're not best. doing the best Resident Evil you, game, Jackson? Resident Evil Three Remake. <laughs> best ever. I feel like Joey's here. Is that someone we know? Joey's here. Becky's here. You know what my least favorite uh, Resident Evil game is? Because I've only played two. I don't care. Resident don't Evil care. 1 Remake. You know, it's poopy. I second that. I second that. Out of the remakes, that one's the best one. Which says it's a lot, the, actually. It's the poopiest one. Go fuck yourself. I will not tolerate such slander. I will not tolerate this. I, I actually, you know, I'm glad that we don't... <sighs> I have such complicated emotions about Resident Evil 3 Remake. Um, and I almost feel like it would like be a lot emotionally to get into that. Because <laughs> I have so much to say about that game. But you also and want to continue playing that next week, or in the two weeks from now. I knew it! I knew it! That is Jackson! Who's Jackson? Jackson's in the chat! 
He's best ever. I know. I, I think he made that YouTube account when we were like 14. Jackson is a guy you can depending on. You can depending on. You can be depending on him. Do you even spoke in English? That's terrible. <laughs> Listen, the only reason why I appreciate Jackson is because he's... I can talk about Star Trek with him. I send him Star Trek memes and he actually gets them. Unlike some people I know. I get, like, every third one. Do you get Watch the Irishman Suffer? Hold on. One at a time, children. I said I don't get any of them. Don't call me child. Cunt. Hey, I remember when you watched that one Star Trek episode with me, or two of them. Yeah, doesn't mean. Well, because David, just, every time he hangs out with anybody, he just like hijacks the controller, uh, and then just goes and puts on a random episode. Listen, I did yeah. this one. With, I did this one. I, you know consent. what? You guys can try and tie. Uh, Jackson in the chat suggested tying me down and forcing me me to watch all of Next Gen and Deep Space. Nine. Honestly, if I if I would be very mm. much down to hanging out with with you and Jackson and forcing you to watch Star Trek, that would be fun. You know, I could probably handle it. <laughs> Anna would not be down with it. She would leave the room immediately. I mean, Anna's one of those people where I feel like she has the the self-respect and independence to say no when other people I know don't. Because uh, she, she does not like Star Wars or Star Trek, and she thinks both of those are the fucking lamest shit ever and, and judges you heavily for liking them. I mean, she also likes K-dramas, so... Can she really well, yeah, judge? You know. Yeah, but you like Star Trek, so can you really? Can you really judge? I do, and I can. Oh no. Yeah, so what the hell's... I, okay, I haven't encountered it yet in the show. I guess Yeah. I, uh, maybe I haven't seen it yet, but there's apparently something in there where they're like, oh yeah, New Vegas, uh, or Las Vegas is over there, and it's just a giant hole in the ground. There is no Las Vegas, and that would make that game not canon. <laughs> Yeah. Is that what happened? It's something like that, yeah. That's, hmm. uh, that's petty. <laughs> um, and, like, hilarious. That's, that's like, uh, if they did, like, a, a Batman Arkham TV show, and then they didn't like the Suicide Squad game, so they just said, oh, and Metropolis is gone. It doesn't exist. That would be the best fucking ending to that, actually. Or it would be like if, uh, if... If they made a uh, Man of Steel two after Wonder Woman, except that uh, the director of Wonder Woman uh, pissed off the director of Man of Steel two, so they just said, "Oh yeah, uh, Themyscira uh, doesn't exist. Nuked in 1945." Themyscira, yeah, they killed everyone there. They don't exist anymore. They Sorry. Don't exist. Or okay, so all, mistake, or, uh, or it might also be as chat, bad as saying if... that New Vegas is still canon. But it, it almost, like, the dialogue was, like, written weirdly in a way where it made it seem like it might not be for a second. Well, also, like, I don't trust uh, Bethesda to do anything right. So it could have been that they literally well, tried you know, to respect the canon, they just, just didn't works. know how. It just works. Uh, uh, anything executive produced yeah. by Todd Howard, I don't trust. <laughs> Todd McFarlane. <laughs> can't wrong, him too. I, I still can't I'm still waiting for the for the for the what's his name uh, Spawn movie directed by uh, Todd, uh, Todd McFarlane uh, to I, Hello everyone I'm Todd McFarlane and today I'm going to talk to you about the Spawn movie hello, That's right hello. we got a Spawn movie finally coming out after all these years we got it's got Jamie Foxx Todd McFarlane having a chills voice it sounds like the funniest I just thought of this now like imagine Todd McFarlane with a fucking chills voice Have you ever seen the devil Have you seen his face Would you know his, his eyes, eyes. What? Is he just a red naked man with horns and a Is tail? Is this a reference to something? Yeah, the fucking like animated uh, series intro. It, it would start off with Todd uh, McFarlane doing something, and then he would like look at the camera, 
and then he would like do his little monologue that I guess. No, he didn't. So he would do like a Rod. So he'd do a Rod Stewart monologue from like the Twilight Zone. He forgot to download Resident Evil Three. And it would yeah, take I guess long to like be down. Yeah. He just started to play a game that's already on his PC, but yeah, he's a fucking moron. He forgot to download Resident Evil Three. It would take too long, so um, yeah, we're just playing this because because he's a stupid piece of shit. Oh, it, it, is my mic still on? Uh, no, I didn't hear anything that you just said. <laughs> oh no! Did you say something? Were you talking, talking right now? <laughs> I, I'm sad that William is stuck in Chill's voice mode. I mean, it would it he's gonna be like that for a while. I've I know been that, doing it for the last week with my friends, and it's, he has it's to unlearn it. Thing. We were just making a joke. I, that... Yeah, um, I I got on call with them today, and I was doing my my shtick, and then it hit me. Man, it'd be like it felt really awkward to go back to my voice, and I started to think like, what if this is just like what my voice is from then on like what if i just learned to speak like that it's what happened to austin butler <laughs> and i have to and i have to like relearn how to speak like in my normal voice like how the fuck would that work <laughs> i don't know the chill's voice is such a funny fucking voice dude like i it's just imagining somebody speaks like that unironically is such a funny fucking thought Maybe you gotta push the button on the on the on the control panel thingy. I refuse okay. to press. The stream buttons. is delayed because David, the fucking stinky goober, has not shared his stream on this. I board. have, you fucker. No, you haven't. <laughs> not yes, the I have. I'm talking about like the actual like like sharing your screen. I am. You're not. Yes, I am. You're absolutely not. He's not. Yes. He's gaslighting us. What the fuck is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Yeah, William, it's all your... Becky doesn't oh, no. know what this game is? What the fuck? How... Becky, how do you know what this game is? It's Half-Life! This oh, is basically no. an official Half-Life 1 remake. It, that, that, it's, okay, this it's is not a official, but... This is not an official game. It's not I official, say... but it basically is. <laughs> It basically is like I would it's say. It's, 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 it's official. And oh, so you is actually gave the that guy the toilet paper. <laughs> yes, I did. That's great. Well, listen, I'm not gonna leave a leave a man behind like that. Becky, Becky, this is the game. This is one of the this two games that influenced Dead Space. Alongside this Resident Evil, like, oh, you fucking gooba. You goofy Dead goober. Dead Space is you like somewhere like between. You know, because Isaac Clarke is a very Gordon Freeman type protagonist. Dude, he's a, yeah, he's just like space Gordon Freeman. Like that's literally they, what it like, is. Like, they're guys in an academic field who are called to action in a sci-fi setting. Once, like, uh, but a Isaac Clarke isn't an academic. Alien. He's a working Joe. Well, he's an engineer, but he has an he has an education in in, in engineering, so he, he knows what he's There's talking about. But apparently, he couldn't get a better job. Yeah, no, it's like some kind of like tax He's about as he's about as Resident educated as Reed Ripley is in the Alien movies. Uh, you know, well, that's besides I, the point. The point is, the I, I, I feel like no if you play the, like the Dead Space One movie. remake, they tried to boost his intelligence a little bit through circumstance. What? I don't know. We're we're just um, nerding out now. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. I'm, I uh, you're also well, add wrong. To that list, Becky, add to that list. Loading because that is a big influencer. I don't know if the thing is an in, is a big influence to Dead Space. Would you would you say the thing an alien? Definitely the monster the design for sure. The monster designs yeah, are the super design, but like, I, I mean, like, well, you know, totally. Not, not necessarily like the content because there's no like who's the yeah. creature like a Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, definitely the, the creature design, though. Yeah. Amorgus? Amorgus. Amorgus. Even then, I would argue that that's, like, low-key influenced by Half-Life. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if, if I would word it like that exactly, but what I'm trying to say is that Half-Life has a lot of these things. A, a lot of these creatures that look very Dead space -y. You know, I'm right. starting to I like think the way that the, the necromorphs are opened up down the middle actually kind of looks like head crabs. You know, I'm starting to think that the head crabs in in uh, Dead Space may have influenced the design of the of the of the 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 little 
things that uh, implant the eggs in you in Alien. Well, yeah, those are definitely influenced by Alien. No, I was saying well, yeah, the other the, way around. The, the, the oh, the, the head crabs in this game are definitely like face huggers from Alien. No, I'm saying Yo. the head crabs inspired the face huggers, not the other way around. Oh, do you think you're uh, getting Ridley the Scott's you're getting big, the chronology you wrong? Think Dan O'Bannon and Ridley Scott are big Half Life fans. Yes, I do. I do think they are. That's so crazy. Face huggers are that, the creatures that are attached to our head in the Alien franchise. You see, Dan O'Bannon and Ridley that. Scott got advanced copies of Half Life back in the 1970s, so that they could have this. Gabe whole Newell idea. himself stepped out of a smoking okay, time okay, machine Becky, and handed him a copy. Space sided Resident and Ridley Evil Scott was like, "I don't have a computer that can run this." <laughs> and he said, "Don't he worry, here you go, fam." Fucking like 1978 DOS piece of shit. What? And then he Not said, "Don't you worry, here you go, fam." In he said, "Here you go, fam. I got one for you." I would like to see if you could run Half Life One on a, any computer that existed circa 1978 to 77. Oh fuck yeah, dude! That game is super well optimized. Bro, hey. fucking <laughs> really? You think? Twenty I years? Think. Yeah, super optimized. Very good. Oh, it's, it's not also that the very game... poopy. What? Okay. I think I can't tell if he's fucking with me. No, you know what? Absolutely, anyway, Becky. Um, <laughs> you could totally um, run Doom though. <laughs> you can definitely run Doom. Yeah, because Doom is just a fucking two D game, dude. You can run Doom on anything. Yeah. Anyway, Be Becky's talking about the influences for for Dead Space. The difference between what some people are saying versus what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is like basically just repeating what the creator of the series said. And you know what I'm saying is the truth. Specifically pointed out that two games are what influenced Dead Space the most, which was Resident Evil 4 and Half-Life. Wait, I mean, even like uh, Isaac has right a gravity now, gun. This is, this is a losing battle. You're rolling that fucking boulder up the, a hill. The right kinesis now. in Dead Space is literally just the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. Yeah, no, that's literally what it is. Thinker, get I wish more games had that. I, I was like thinking at the time that that was going to be like the big new mechanic. I, there was two things that I thought, okay, every game's going to have this now. Is the gravity gun is going to be everywhere. And then also I think the limb cutting system from Dead Space is going to get ripped off by a million competitors. And I was wrong on both fronts. I did not find any more games with gravity guns. Because physics stopped being like a, like a novelty in video games like really fast. It started to just become like standard, you know? They didn't gravity want to play guns, with it or do mean, tech demo shit. Gravity guns, you mean gavity guns? Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like no one wanted to do tech demo shit for her uh, game physics anymore. They are just like, well, it's there, you know. Here's ragdoll physics, who cares? It's standardized, everyone fucking has that now. And then instead um, of doing ragdoll physics, they want to do dumb tech demos for how good their graphics are that nobody's impressed by. That's the thing, is like, I, every generation of 3D gaming, everyone is trying to like do the same thing. And um, it's, cool like, it's like an arms race. And yeah, cool shit. oh look, they're doing an experiment. I wonder what uh, the experimente. This, it, I I don't think anything's gonna go wrong. I think it's just gonna be a nice, smooth, uh, enlightening we'll experiment to advance the future of science in this country. I remember and for a little while, the big thing times. in games, the big thing in games for a little while in the early two thousands was uh, everyone was competing to see who could either have better physics or better lighting. Half-Life went for physics, but Doom 3 had super dynamic, really well-programmed lighting. But and then Doom the next thing was like, for shit. was like the big world, like the big open world. Yeah, everyone thing. had to have the giant open world map. And everybody was competing for how big their world could be. had both, actually. Half-Life 2's lighting looks fucking amazing to this day, man. Like something the about the way game, lighting and all is like it aged so fucking well. Something we about the way they did it in, in Doom we 3, like, I think, like looks party. a little better. We but that, that's party. because it was like, the only party. thing that it had going for it. Are you <laughs> talking about the Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie? Can I please finish a thought? No. Yeah, the way they did it in Doom 3 was a lot more moody. I don't know. I mean, do you think 
it's better comparatively because it is a different sort of style. But what do you think? Hang on, I need a nerd. But you have a point to make about that. Huh? Oh well, look, a sample's I'm going into the laser thing. Nerds. Like, handy? I thought, oh good, I thought you were eating nerds. actual human nerds. The carrier into the analysis board. You wouldn't survive if I was. Bitch. I'm not uh, a nerd, I'm a geek. Know the difference. What um, is he doing in there? Anyway. <laughs> Wait, I say so much right? nerds. What the fuck? <laughs> I was gonna say, I would say that the the type of game they were going for with Doom 3 had more dynamic and moody lighting, um, but uh, graphically every single thing about it other than that looked worse. They had worse character models, worse textures, worse like even the like the the physics weren't as good. The level design, like nothing about it looked better than Half Life. But by God, did those shadows look fucking awesome! <laughs> and that's like what yeah. they put all their stock in was we have the the coolest lighting and it's like well what about the seven or eight other things that Half-Life has on you and it was like um doesn't matter weirdly enough lighting. but weirdly enough I feel like Doom 3 feels a lot like a Half-Life 1 clone it feels so much like Half-Life 1 but more horror -y. it makes you feel like Half-Life makes you feel like Half-Life like the I, feeling. I of have Doom Three in my library, and I haven't touched that yet. I haven't because I've been I playing. Like it. I mean, I I'm playing a lot Doom of people. Two, like I don't know, man. Fucking. Mo Here's the thing. Everything I have. We have order. this really bad habit of starting games and then getting yeah. like halfway through them and then never finishing them, oh. and then we get back to them like <laughs> fucking months, months like or like years three months, months later. We pick up where we left you off, and we're months. like. What the fuck were we doing? doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just did that yesterday when we we, we were that playing that fucking Silent Hill 3. Three. And I was like, I still remember the like the major stuff, but what the fuck are these initials? What do these mean? And these are, those are initials that like has been in in the game and building up in the game for a while, but because we like we've been fucking stop starting and stopping so frequently for long stretches of time, it's like those little details kind of just. Like fell through. It, like, we didn't. Like, what the fuck? What does that mean? You know, I we um, we used to be a lot better about it, where we play a game. Or well, that was back when my sleep schedule was completely ruined. So that was back and also I, had I fucking job responsibilities. Yeah, you didn't have a job, and my sleep schedule was so bad that you and I could just play a game from like 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. And well, that just was like that was fine, and we could do that like five days in a row, and we got through so many games like that. Well, that was also during the time where I hadn't started games. I, I took a yeah. year between one course and the other. So yeah, it, it was it was circumstantially like a very good time for that sort of shit. But we yeah. got through like the whole Resident Evil series. Like that was like fucking fifteen games. Yeah, we got through what like uh, Resident Evil one two. One through, I want to say seven, uh, and then the remakes, and then which revelations, like the remakes, and then revel. Yeah, okay, oh, I'm already losing count. That was so much. Revelations and one and two, games, and then Evil Within. Uh, I would prefer to watch all the Resident Evil, Evil movies to playing all the games. You know, I've actually only seen the first uh, 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 one uh, from the uh, from the from the. What, is it? It's not. Okay, it's W. S. Anderson. Isn't it? The carrier into the analysis port. Paul W. S. Anderson. Paul W. S. Anderson. Every yeah, time I'm different name, from. I get it confused. Because I, I think of Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> I think of Wes Anderson. So anytime, like there, there have been a time where somebody was like praising Wes Anderson, and in my mind, I'm like, wait, the guy who made the Revenant movies? I would pay. To and see Wes Anderson's Wes Resident Anderson's Evil. Resident Evil. Now that guys, would be I love Wes cinema. Anderson. He's such a good director. Look at it would not be at there. all Resident That's Evil, but it would be interesting. And all I'm about is the guy who did Resident Evil. Welcome to Play Yeah. Or maybe the director of uh, Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, whatever his name is. See, that movie's so memorable, you even forgot the name of the director. I can't, there's like, 
it, you know what? Here's the thing. It, I'm, I'm willing to have this debate with all of you right now. I say that the first two Alice movies in Paul W.S. Anderson's Resident Evil series is better than Welcome to Raccoon City. Because I've only seen the those first actually, movie. Those actually good. have... Well, they're not good. But, but at the very least, they have some, up. like, directorial style. There's, like, kind of, like, something yeah. about those movies that's well, memorable. Well, I'll say they're, they're coherent stories style. with a middle, a beginning, middle, and an end. And uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is just a drive-by of scenes from the game stripped of their They're context. Wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just like, here's an out-of-context random reference that you, hey, you, you know Itchy Tasty. You read the file in the game. You know Itchy Tasty. So here's that, a character that. saying that. Remember that? Remember that? Here's the piano. And it's like, none of it's in the right context. Remember Lisa Trevor? Here she is in a completely different scene. Like, when you, you throw that shit in there, it's not like... It's just coming across as, like, shallow fan service. It doesn't seem like you actually like the games, or you're trying to give us the story from the games, because, like, it's not the story. The characters are all wrong. They don't act like themselves in any way, and the, none of the same things are happening. They're just, like, it's something you kind of recognize. You're supposed to point and do the, the Leonardo DiCaprio meme, because you oh, that's from the game. At the very least, in the fucking Paul W.S. Anderson movies, whenever something shows up from the game, they don't make, like, a super huge deal about it and expect, like, stop the movie and look at the audience and then want you to laugh or go... It's just, like, there and... Uh, yeah. Like, honestly, those movies are basically an unrelated action horror franchise that just has occasional Resident Evil references in them. Like... Hey, like here's the executioner guy right. from RE5. Or here's a guy who, like, looks kind of like Leon. Here's a guy who's um, a girl who's called a Ada Wong. You know, like, that, kind of that the stuff thesis, shows up. The thesis of it before the studio was kind of like, hey, do you want to just make Resident Evil? Do we have a Like, the whole reason as to why that initial script was... Yeah, he was, he was making a different movie first, and then they said... That wasn't by Resident Evil, but they were like, we have yeah. the rights... So when that. you and that yeah, just carried when, through the whole series. It well, it's basic. It's more appropriate to just call it Resident Alice. Resident Alice, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, the I one that's that. most that's most like a proper Resident Evil like adaptation is the second one, Apocalypse, because that actually has the most characters, and it's actually adapting. Here's the Fall of Raccoon City. Here's Nemesis. Um, here's the Umbrella Corps. There's Carlos, there's fucking Jill, and, and um, like, it's trying to be kind of a Resident Evil 3 adaptation. But also, it does not really superly give a fuck about all that, and then kind of veers off into doing its own thing. And then after well, that, they never look back at Resident Evil as like, a, we need to do this thing from the games. It just becomes, like, by Resident Evil, at Resident Alice 3... The one where it's in the desert, because for some reason the zombie virus makes the water go away. Um, it's it, like it, it's hard to even compare it to the games anymore because it doesn't care about that. You know, it's not really even trying for that. So, you know, what's worse, an adaptation that is trying and failing, or an adaptation that is not trying very hard, so it's not even really failing? Yeah, I mean. Like, when you put the effort in, and then it sucks that bad, it's more embarrassing than the movie where they were it's not like, trying that hard. Which which ha Hellraiser movie is worse? Is it the one that's just a Jacob's Ladder knockoff? Or is it the one that's trying to be Hellraiser but not doing it very well? <laughs> um, uh, um, that movie being... Uh, the, like, the, the fourth one. The most recent one. Well, because in the chat, someone says an adaptation that's not really trying hard uh, is, is worse. I, you see, in my mind, see, it's I like... I bad, but that's kind of the thing I have with it, is I don't know which is worse. Like, I can't... 
I'm just trying to measure that out because I wouldn't want an adaptation of something that isn't trying to adapt the thing. Well, okay. Every it, MCU movie what, I hate. It's not just that yeah. it's not trying hard. It's also, it's mostly being its own thing and not trying That's too what I'm hard saying. to if adapt. If you're trying to adapt something, adapt the thing that you're adapting. Don't just go up and make your own thing and then stop, like, you know, the name of the product on it. I don't like that. But at the same time, obviously, when you're trying to do something and it fails because you do it wrong, that's also bad. It's like I don't know, know which I don't know which one I prefer over the other. I, I think I prefer if you just like fail to do it properly because then at least you're trying to be like you're trying to be truthful and accurate to the source instead of just doing your own thing and then slapping the name of the IP on it just to like garner attention. But, yeah, well, I, I guess mean, it, like, it matters what the end result is because what's worse, if the end result is a movie that just kind of somewhat resembles Resident Evil. And it's like, but otherwise it's still like decent on its own, or a movie that is trying really hard to resemble Resident Evil, but it's like a dog shit ass garbage movie. Like, yeah, okay, cool. You got you got Jill Sandwich in there. You put Jill Sandwich in the dialogue. Fuck That's off. That's Jill Sandwich that. now. That's Jill Sandwich now. Like, oh, god, shut up. Jump in a lake. That shit is so embarrassing. It is you know, embarrassing. I'm, I'm not, the Fallout show like, just the is, is like stepping the all of this. <laughs> They're both bad, but like, I don't know, man. Like, you know, okay. Well, I will, I will say like, this. Generally, I don't okay, think okay. If we're speaking that about the people who welcome directions, obviously, I'd prefer the like ones the that game. aren't trying, since they're more bearable. But it's as a general rule of thumb, huh? Well, yeah, the, like I said, the Paul W. S. Anderson movies, they're generally just doing their own thing. And yeah. they're proficient at that. What it's like, doing okay. on its own, it's competent at. Which is a cool, fun, schlocky action zombie movie. See, but what I'm saying is, like, it's, it, it's, it's kind of situational. Um, in this case, in this situation, obviously I prefer the W. S. Anderson ones because they're at least, like, bearable. Um, They're watchable. Generally, generally speaking, I would prefer the other way around. Like, if you're trying to make a Spider-Man movie, for example, I want you to at least try to stick to the original thing instead of going off and doing your own thing. But again, it's situational. Like, you don't want to fucking recreate yeah. the course of well, one. For me, but it's at the like... Same time, um... You don't want to fucking, you know, go off and do your own adaptation of fucking... Uh, I don't know. I mean, what, what's what's a really good story? Like, uh, like the the story where fucking Aunt, Aunt May finds out that Peter's Spider Man, which is what the MCU did. It's like, oh, but it's it's, it's different. It's still kind of the same premise, but it, we did it differently. It's like I, I hate See, that. that, don't that, do that this is where we're getting into the works for a reason, de and it the wouldn't have. Question of it's a new take because. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a new like, take is often used as like a band-aid you just slap on a shitty adaptation. Is they just told the story really wrong and fucked it up, but they can go, It's a new take though! It's a new take! It's a new take but that's what I'm saying, um, it's situational. The Paul W. S. Anderson movies are actually a new take. That isn't that that is literally a new take. But that's kinda what I'm saying, is it's situational. That's Sometimes what I said when I was directing a movie. Off. Let's do a new take. <laughs> We're gonna, let's do, we're gonna a, let's do, do a new take. <laughs> God we're damn. gonna stick to the DNA of Venom in, in this one, but we're this gonna. This time we're give gonna a make take. a new Venom that's faithful to the character, but it's gonna be different but than you know. But it's, it's gonna be faithful to the character. Everything guys. you like about Venom will be here. But it's a, it's a new take. Except for all the things that you like about Venom. We're gonna make a new take about I, Venom I that has everything except for the things you like about it. We're gonna stay to the material that makes Venom so lovable. We're gonna stay faithful I love, I love to the, the, the true heart of the fucking lies and deception and, and, and misdirection of the way they fucking talked about Venom prior to the game's release. You had Bill this fucking so Roseman so of all shit, you had is Bill Roseman so much, of all people nothing. fucking going on articles and going on interviews and stuff and going, yeah, Venom just, like, he doesn't want to take over the world or rob the bank, he just wants to kill Spider-Man. There's so much mealy mouth game. bullshit in those interviews, and they're so phony, and so every time someone says, oh, we're really big fans of the source material, we really want to 
tell our own spin on the story, but still stay faithful to what makes it so iconic. Every time I hear any variation of that sentence, I know they're just fucking lying. I know they're just they're big, saying that to sound good on the, the internet. Figures that they got You're big they fans of money, you fucking assholes. They're big fans of the action I'm so tired of hearing movie. that. And that's that's their fucking, like, adaptate. That's the adaptation in question. It's just the fucking toys they grew up on. We're big fans of the of the comics. Yeah, but, so uh, we like the character the design, but we don't care what if he even fucking talks like himself or would say or do literally anything that the character would say or do. But he looks they have, good. They have because that's like, what the character really is, is, right? Is their costume? Is their outfit? <laughs> that's all they are. Like they they have they have this thing, this mentality of let's just do whatever people like, as opposed to let's just do what like, you know is accurate and again it's tricky because sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't like okay i mean you could tell a really really the comic MCU accurate adaptation and it would still suck the mcu had the perfect opportunity to make peter parker a fucking asshole like he was in the comics because that would be like a fresh new thing right because they haven't done that in the movies before but that would yeah, be like a, a confrontation ah david just killed himself he just killed him should i do it again uh, you know, Please do. keep doing it um, until it sticks. Uh, with friends like these, who needs enemies? That's what I'm saying. Um, what were we saying? Uh, yeah, look, I, the MC had, like, the perfect opportunity to make, like, Peter a fucking asshole instead of, like, this, this Wojak soy boy small bean kind of guy. Fire that been Yeah, don't make him a Morty. But you made him a Morty. That's a new take. That fucking sucks. <laughs> it's what people are used to. It's, it's it, it doesn't care about Peter, the source Peter, material. It's doing since, its own thing. Like, Spider Man 2002, and I don't. I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's it's its fault because like it's just one fucking thing, right? Like, you can't just pin everything on like one single thing. But people just fucking saw that movie, like, wow, this is really good. And then decided to base their entire fucking idea of the character on those movies instead of like doing any preliminary research to see like what did they change from the source As material. All of us, when we were like kids and teenagers, we thought Peter Parker acted exactly how Tobey Maguire acted. But when you yeah. go read those books, he does not act like that at all. He is like He's so like a different. Like shooter, dude. He's so fucking confrontational. He's always yelling at people and getting into fucking fights. He's always bad mouthing people and talking shit. He, he's like, so he's also kind of full of himself. And which is like the thing that got his uncle killed. Like it wasn't that he didn't stop a bank robber necessarily. He was a, like was, a flawed he was character. Robert, he was so full of himself, and he's always been like that. The, the the significance of Uncle Ben isn't that he told him the words that he lived by. It's that it taught him the lesson of he's a, his selfishness, his life up. Uh, so it's it's just it's annoying when you keep getting these versions of the character that I feel like you keep, we keep getting these versions of the character that I genuinely feel like it's weird and out of character for them to do the whole. Like, it's kind of like how in uh, the all the adaptations of of Star Trek. They make Captain God. Kirk the the womanizer, and this person oh, yeah. who's like His just an immature womanizer who's constantly punching people, and doesn't ever stop to think and doesn't ever grow and mature. When the character was not like that, but that's how yeah. people kind of remember him from like because he like he like times punched, he, like he that. did like the two fist punch and stuff. Yeah, he, he punched Khan in the back of the head. He fucker. He did that to him. He did that to him. He made those sounds as well. I I I think what we're really talking about is um. It it's frustrating how flanderization happens, and then everyone just goes, "No, this has always been like this," when it's like markedly worse than what it used to be, but we're so used to it being this shitty version of itself now. Is that this morally like, acceptable what I'm doing right the... now? Yeah, that's fine. And then people kind of almost I'm get good. to the point where we're like talking down on you for wanting it to just go back to the old way when it wasn't. But then when it goes back to the old way, it's crazy. But then yeah, yeah. When it goes back. Oh, you want 
Spider-Man to have the classic suit? How wouldn't we see this like millions of times they give him the classic suit? Oh my god, this is the best thing ever. It's like, weren't you like trashing that idea like a fucking month Weren't ago? you just saying we shouldn't do that? There, you know, I, I'm so, I, I, I'm happy with where Spider-Man is at now in those movies. Okay, but Mr. boy, is, is that trilogy a slog? Because... It went from we're gonna do a new take to where oh it's, it's actually an it's the, it's movie. what you know but we just took fucking like seven hours of movie to get there this time. It's the and surf it's, like, it's it's the surf Dracula thing, right? Surf Dracula. I fucking hate I'm the surf it. Dracula effect. <laughs> Punisher had the surf Dracula effect so bad, where it again? took. So okay, it's so a tweet, said, and the tweet said. Uh, back in the 60s, if you made a show called Surf Dracula, you would see that guy surfing like 20 days a week. But now, if you make a TV show about Surf Dracula now, it's going to be nothing but, um... It says, uh, it's, it, 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 it's going to take be him... a long flashback to how he got the surfboard until yeah. you finally get to see oh, him surf uh, for five minutes in the finale. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That's, that's the right. surf Dracula. Surf Dracula is such a perfect encapsulation. <laughs> it's it's so fucking like the state that we're at with how we portray characters and IPs has like for the popular characters anyway. Well it's they just a question earn, it's also a question of changing mediums because when you're when you're uh when you're making a, se a seven hour, eight hour TV show instead of a fucking 12 hour season. And that's kind of switching, changing the types of stories and how you tell them. And the easiest and perhaps laziest way to tell that story is to just do the origin story over and over again. Yeah, but man. Like, that's just the problem, is it's just the laziness of it. It's like, you want to do something new, do something that, you, like, okay, what is new? What well, is well, fresh? You can't what is sell, original? You like, can't what, sell what, new like, things. What constitutes all these things? It's something that the mainstream hasn't seen before. Like, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but that doesn't make money. Well, what is, People don't what see is a new thing. What is new and unique about fucking MCU Spider-Man? Oh, he works with Iron Man, he works with Avengers. All right, cool. But like, what about his character? Because that's oh, hello, Mister Mister. Now, now we've made him like a, a crybaby who's polite and kind of just a okay. But you could say that's an extension talks. of what Tobey Maguire's Spider Man was like. But yeah, he had some of that problem. Sure, too. Like, what's, what's new about that? Okay, like we we got a good take of that where he's a bit more meek, a bit more humble, right? A bit less of an asshole, a bit less of a judge. You know what? You're that. using way better words take. than I am. <laughs> Thank you. I don't believe in thing. words. I don't believe in language or communication or me when i'm kevin feige and marvel studios and Disney. we could talk um, about this all fucking day but <laughs> because we have a lot to say it's shit that like it's just that like get shut down for it on twitter oh well there's no you can't have a, a conversation on twitter because the character well, limit yeah. it's like you have to make a very punctual and then there's gonna be 20 people in your statement. flies saying pussy and bio pussy and pussy. bio <laughs> Pussy in, in bio. Pussy in bio. Pussy in profile. And then there's just a screenshot of hardcore pornography. Click on the link in bio to see my pussy. Pussy in bio! My wife heard me say that and she yelled pussy in bio down the stairs. Pussy okay, I picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, another another thing I still like what we're talking about about the so intensely. It's like, so funny right though. We haven't fucking like chatted in a long fucking while, so we haven't like really had time or opportunities to talk about the shit which we're both passionate about. Which is why we could go at it for days and hours. Um, which that being said, yeah, man. Fucking everything is just so lazy. And, and dude, thank fucking God for the Batman and for James Gunn and the new DCEU and like all the shit they're doing over there. Because I, I saw Blue Beetle. I, I know that's part of the new DC DC universe. Blue I didn't Beetle. like it all that much. I didn't think it was terrible. It just it's wasn't okay. my cup of tea. 
It was, I like the fight scenes and cool the, uh, the costumes. So, like, it was perfectly was adequate. It was a fine a movie. Fun movie. And I say that only because I have a... Only because I may have had a slight crush on the main character, main actor. That's the only reason no, why I like fair. that movie. That's, that's, he is, that's fair. He's no, that's fair. Hot. Is, is um, he's, like, distractingly hot. Yeah. Is a problem. Well, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm it is not a problem. It is a problem. you guys are, but it's fair. But I, I just I didn't <laughs> think it was as good as, like, a lot of the other movies. As well as I would have liked it to be. Okay, my standard for, like, really good movies that aren't taking themselves oh. too, too seriously and, like, going a super dark and gritty road is, like, Iron Man level of standard. Oh. If you're trying to have, like, a fun movie, some action, some heart, a lot of heart, good characters, like, that's my bar, right? Just have it, just hit the same standards that Iron Man did. I fucking love that movie. Had you mean movie Iron Man? Wasn't, wasn't quite there. Sorry? You mean Iron Man? Iron Man. Blue Beetle Ir wasn't, wasn't, Iran wasn't man? quite there for me. Okay, so thought... this this uh this scientist, I have a question for you. This scientist, yeah. he just led me to the storage closet with all the this guns and grenades and stuff, but he doesn't yeah. want to come with me. So should I beat him That's to cool. death or should I le let him live? You can beat him to death. You can, you can... Is he okay. giving you the stuff from the storage closet? Is it? Yeah, yeah he, he gave me the stuff from the storage closet. Game. Anything that you do is valid and is encouraged. You can kill him, and that's encouraged. You can leave him, and that's encouraged. And okay, I killed him. Makes um, Gordon seems like a crazy character if, uh, like, 20 minutes into this apocalypse, he's already killing people. Yeah. <laughs> like, killing um, other his co-workers to survive. Like, yeah. he he was looking for an excuse. This isn't a survival thing. He He just was really, really hoping that something like this would happen. He's just been repressed. So that... <laughs> repressed drastically. Honestly, you know, if this alien invasion him. hadn't happened, he would have probably shot up the office three days later anyway. So I guess it's right. better he take his aggression out on the monsters again. and Fucking aliens. <laughs> Gordon, you're late <laughs> Oh my god, where'd you get that M60? <laughs> Tell me I'm late one more goddamn time. And he goes, he sees the guy fucking uh, pressing the button too many times on the microwave and he just fucking stabs him in the brain with a crowbar. No, no. Sees the guy putting the fucking egg casserole in the microwave, looks him in the eyes and just presses the button multiple times to like make it explode as he's like just fucking staring him down. No, no. And then at the front, he grabs the guy. <laughs> no, he grabs the guy by the, his shirt collar and slams his face through the glass in the microwave and then starts pressing the button more and more while holding him in there until his brain explodes in the microwave. Yeah, so like that's that the canonical decision that my, uh, my, uh, Your Gordon, made. Gordon Freeman made is that he just murdered that's that guy. Um, Your Gordon but... Freeman is a repressed serial killer who's, who's just, like, finally off the chain now that society is broken down in this alien invasion. Maybe, it hasn't broken down yet, but maybe that's what he was hoping for. Well, well you know, it's, it's on its way. Give it seven hours. Well, no, that, it doesn't happen immediately after. Like, there's, there's a bit of a, like, there's, there's a break between these events and then the seven hour war. There's like, I, I don't know, like a couple of years between one and the other. Maybe like a, a, I don't know, it's a very short period, but th th there's a beat, there's a bit of a Anyway, Nerd. I, I wasn't too big of a fan on Blue Beetle. Oh, like I tried to grab the flaming fun. barrel of gas. <laughs> I wanted to throw it what back. What was your at plan? Him. Were you gonna throw it back? Yes. Uh, you know, I would. Can you reload your well, save? I want to see if you could do that. I want to see if you had a shot at making that throw. I'm not gonna do that because I want to keep playing. Oh, you have the no gun, fun. You could definitely do that. Oh no! I want to see if he could do it with his hands. Grab it and roll it back. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. Blue Beetle movie. is fine. I'm. I'm. I. I would. Fine. I would definitely watch that actor in more Blue Beetle movies. But I do I, appreciate I, it, that he there. There's a stronger emphasis in. So the things that's interesting for me in the DCEU. First of all, you have a writer director in charge of the creative side. It's not just. A producer, like a guy who's just, who's more that side of things. He's you have somebody who's in bit a creative in charge of it. Not that producers can't be creative, but Kevin Feige is much more of a business guy. Yeah. And second of all, uh, the other thing that's interesting to me is that they're they're 
made the decision to focus a lot more strongly on basing their cinematic versions of their characters on specific story arcs. So, like, they can say, our Supergirl is based on Tom King's run from this year to this year. Or our Superman is based on these comic books, and you can buy them here. Which is... Interesting. That's a that's a solid direction. I like just going, okay, instead of trying to make a catch-all version of this character that somehow fits all of these different interpretations from hundreds of writers over almost a hundred years, here's three or four things that we're trying to look at, and we're trying to just fit it in these kinds of terms. And, and it's specific. In terms of what? Yeah, and that's the, I mean, that's how they handle Batman, is, like, I, I did a whole video breaking down the specific comics that the Matt Reeves Batman was mostly like, and it keeps it close to the chest. It's, it's really just, like, yeah, this one's, like, pretty much just, um, Long Halloween, uh, kind of mixed in with, like, a little bit of this thing from over here, and this thing here, and it's got a few scenes from, like, this thing. Um, it's not, like... Because I notice sometimes they just try to do, like, we're we're just going to make our own completely new personality for this character and then just kind of have him do a few scenes from a few books and they'll be in a completely different context or, like... But of the scenes that that one did cover, a lot of them actually were just straight up from the book. Yeah. Which was nice. It's like... Mostly the stuff to do with Carmine Falcon. Well, yeah, because they, they, they took him in a vacuum. It's like, okay, in the law sense of things, like, what do we want to, like, what aspects of these books do we just want to, like, take and absorb into our own law, like, our universe? They did that, and they're like, okay, now from these books, what elements of the characters do we like and we want to also take into, like, our universe? So it isn't just them, like, thinking, oh, but what if Batman was, like, not scary and angry? It's, okay, Batman is scary and angry. To what extent do we want to take that? Like, it isn't them trying to change it. It's, it's, like, it's different like mix and match with Matt what's already Snyder there. version of Batman where it's like, I'm going to give him a new personality to, that does not gel with any of the fucking uh, Batman books ever made. Where he's like jaded and violent and merciless and just completely fine with killing people. And his arc is about kind of backpedaling off of that. But then also I'm just going to sh- shove in random moments from like, here's a bunch of scenes from Dark Knight Returns completely out of context. Um, with, like, no kind of thematic bridging from the way those scenes were originally with how we're using them here. It's just a just a simple visual callback, and it's just you're supposed to look at it and go, oh, I remember that! But, like, you know, I, I like how Matt Reeves' Batman used a lot of the same context for things in respect to, like, Catwoman, Carmine Falcone, and Bruce's parents, like, uh, the, the history of Bruce's father, um was operating on Carmine after he got shot, and so there's, like, kind of an established connection between the Wayne family and crime lords. They actually like, used the, the, the part of it and that also matters, he not doesn't, the he scene doesn't, itself, the, what the scene means. <laughs> well, he doesn't. Yeah. Al- he also doesn't ever say, wake the fuck up, here's why Batman, well, it's totally awesome that Batman would Here's why kill. Batman would totally kill everyone ever, and it would have... 75 inch biceps and a big car with guns. If, but here's the thing. And here's why you'd be tossing a tire all the time and working out and branding people. If he wanted to do that, that's fine. I just have a problem with the reason why he wanted to do that. It wasn't really like anything except like just out of spite. Oh, they told me I can't do it. Well, I'm gonna do it. It's like, is that really the reason? Like. If you said something like, I wanted to explore what a Batman who, like, lost all of his morals would be like in this world, that's a very fucking valid reason. It's very unique and out of nowhere and very, like, controversial, but there's, like, a good motive. here's another hot take for you. Maybe Zack Snyder isn't a good filmmaker. I think he's a really good director. I don't think, yeah. I, I, I don't think, think he should get someone else to write his scripts, because he could, if he got a really good script... He could make it look really cool. Dude, it's he's just that his I own creative decision. I disagree. 
somewhat. Well, that's his fucking. Um, you know, the he directed a movie Hawaii written by before. James Gunn, and it's like one of his best ones. And also, he kind of didn't really get James Gunn's scripts in kind of. There was some parts where like the text and the the visuals were saying different things, which was kind of funny. <laughs> he knows how to make a scene look good. He knows how to like work the camera like. No, he, he knows the rentals of like a good Apparently, director. Apparently, actors like him. He's he's fun the to work with. The only exception to this being that he's uh, whenever he shoots his own movie, he did it. He did a cinematographer on a couple of his movies, and it looked looked like poop. Yeah. My dad swears that Rebel Moon is one of the worst fucking movies he's ever seen. And I was like, should I watch it? He went, no, no, don't even touch it. Don't don't look at it. The only thing that I saw from uh, <laughs> I mean, Rebel I Moon mean, was the... The only thing that I saw <laughs> from Rebel Moon was the, the, the bit where uh, uh, they made Ed Skrine a, 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 a sexual deviant villain. Yeah. Because apparently all Zack Snyder movies have to have some sort of sexual deviant like, as the villain. Like, all of his villains are oh, somewhat queer, queer coded. Yeah. Like Xerxes you know, from 300. I made the joke about Lex like, Luthor being the sexual deviant, but then you said, oh, they're all queer coded. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, what's kind of that in Batman vs Superman, wasn't he? He is, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's the fruitiest Lex Luthor we've ever gotten. Literally, like, like, they're all <laughs> General Zod and Man of Steel. I say that yeah. as a man who is a little fruity. That guy was pretty fruity. And like, also, uh, yeah, General Zod. He literally made him like a. They put they 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 blasted off in penis spaceships into the. <laughs> they <laughs> look that's so that's true. That's big yeah, metal dicks. <laughs> It's like that scene from The Dictator. It's where like, uh, like... It's, it, it, see, this is why we all say that, that Zack Snyder has somewhat fascist aesthetics. Because all of his villains, they're all gay, and also he worships masculinity, but like in a, in like a straight way, where it's like hyper-masculinity is great, and blah blah blah, whatever. And a lot of, a lot of the dum-dums will say, oh, you know, Zack Snyder, he loves uh, dudes, he's so much, he's so, uh... You know, he must be gay or whatever. No, it's like, it's it's that sort of fascist fetishization of masculinity. So I won't say he is yeah, what does fascist. That mean? Because... I just say he uses fascist aesthetics. And I don't think he really stops and thinks about what that means. Okay, but when you say, like, he worship, what was that again? Like, the, the masculinity or something like that? Yeah, like, sort of like well, hyper... Like muscles, that? muscles, big, strong muscle guy. Yeah, that's Everywhere. It. Everyone's got to be the rippedest... Fucking masculinist and like, character. And also, okay, how he doesn't really. He, he, listen, like, look at the way his camera that. looks at male bodies versus female bodies, and that's what I'm talking okay. about. Uh, I was gonna say fair, but now I'm, I'm trying to think of like an example off the top of my head. Can you can you name one? Just uh, so 300. Like, um, just like 300. The Every movie, character's 300? abs are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> There's shirtless buff men. Every yeah. square inch of that movie. And there's nothing like, wrong with that. Like, it, it sounds like you're fine. You can have shirtless man. buff men with big old dicks. That's, yeah, but cool. it's 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 this old... sort of like so like a lot of like dum dums will say like oh like you know oh fascists uh, you know the, these like it's like Tucker Carlson you know when he he had that show bit on his show where it, he uh, like talks to talks to the guys who. Uh, like to work Life out and man. shine lights on their balls, and everybody called that super gay. It's like, no, it's 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 a fascist, ero hyper fetishization of masculinity. But it can kind of look gay if you're not really thinking about it. I I don't know if I agree with that, man. In the sense that it's like, I don't I mean I don't know about the, the lingo and all that stuff, the lingo of choice, but. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, like, fucking... Whatever. Well, of course. I, I, it's not necessarily I mean, bad in, to in, do in any of these things. Like, movie, like, it isn't just, like... I don't know, man, like, maybe a shallow example, but, like, they're... The, okay, when they were in uh, Themyscira, and uh, they were trying to, like, fucking protect the box, or trying to get it back from Steppenwolf, like, all the women, like, Themyscirians were also really buff as fuck. I don't think it's a male thing, I just think it's just, like, uh -huh. a... 
He just loves muscle. He, I think it's just, just that he just, like, he just loves he working like, out. Well, well it's, it's, but I, I just think he, he and like bodybuilder. Like I don't really. Like, I do not. He think himself is a bodybuilder. I don't think it's hyperbole, hyperbole to say that like Three Hundred is a fascist movie. I don't. Okay, maybe the movie itself, yeah, but like, I don't think he himself is like. Oh, I'm not saying that he like, is. Oh, like, I'm not saying that he is. I'm just saying he uses yeah. the aesthetics of those people without really thinking about what that means and the implications of it. In that he, there's That's things fair. that he likes, like having the gay villains and. Uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Having the these things, I, I like, genuinely don't think he's homophobic. That, yeah, I, yeah, he's yeah, never given that. me that vibe at all. But he just makes it's... movies that are. Yeah, I can, and, I can and in a way, there's kind of an innocence the, uh, to that. It's just the, that's just how it comes villains. across. I, I can I can understand that with the queer coded villains, but like with other things, like oh, having ubu muscular males or like. I don't well, know. I it's like when you have a movie sense. with uber muscular males, and then all the villains are like effeminate gays, and no, I, that's what I'm and, saying. Are, really and also really like that. deformed uh, people with disabilities. No, no, I agree with that. I like I'm, I'm on the same page with you with that one, but I'm kind of looking at it in a vacuum. Like when you combine the two, I, that's for sure. I, I see what you're saying, but just in a vacuum, like if you wanna, I don't know, like like fucking if if your entire style of I don't know, like, aesthetic, I guess you could say, is let's have these really buff men with their shirts off the whole time and light it in a way well, to accept Then you could just be Joel Schumacher, where you're, like, you just have, you're like, just, a kind of a... You're, you're, ha you're, you're visibly half-shut the you're, whole time you're, you're making you're, that movie. You're putting bat nipples on, on, on the suit. Well, to make them look like Greek statues. But that's what I'm saying, is I, I don't think... Like, no, it's not inherently bad. It's just like the way that he bad. does it in I, I his particular thing, though, material. Like when you have the two in tandem, then it could look like I agree with that. I guess what I was saying. Like it looks is like here's these paragons like, of straightness killing these gay guys. You, yeah, you know, yeah, that's, see, I, like, that's, I how, that. that's how it comes across. Um, and I agree with that. And that may not even be the intention. That's just kind of like that's how just it comes internal so, like, biases kind of leaking out of the well, material. It's just it's these these aesthetics that he likes. And he genuinely just does things that he likes without thinking uh, about the implications yeah, of them. What I was saying, just to clear it up, is I was saying in a vacuum, like with the whole muscular thing, I, I don't see an issue with that. But, like, yeah, the, the clarification of it, it isn't just the vacuum. It's, like, when you have it in tandem with, with the two, that's when it... Like, it's the yeah, context. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just sort of laughed when I saw the... The, the bit in Rebel Moon where the, the, the villain goes into his quarters and then he's basically got like a like a hentai uh, monster in his quarters uh, uh, and he's just 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 letting that thing go to town on him and I'm like hmm. <laughs> you did it again Zack Snyder you gave us another sexual deviant villain of course you did Daddy Snack Zyder because he, he, he just can't resist doing these things. It, it's like, um... It's like how J.J. Abrams can't help but doing mystery box stuff. Oh, yeah, he it always has to... What could I don't have mean? the answers, but I want to ask a question, but well, it's I don't like, know what the answer is. But isn't this an interesting question, though? It's like he's asking I, questions, I the and also is. the most logical answer... It can never be the most logical answer. It's always got to be, oh, but it's abstract. Wee! I died! Yay! Nice. This fucking guy. This damn son of a bitch. homophobic people experience queer feelings but have internalized homophobia but end up feeling, uh, end up being outwardly homophobic and mask representing. Um... That's over my head. I don't, I don't know. I just, I just like... I mean, that's... I, li I like know, vaginas, but I also kind of like penises, too, a little bit. That's it. Joey typed that in the chat. I don't know. I, I I don't think that's the case with Zack Snyder. I think he's a straight man. Yeah, I don't think he's homophobic. And you can quote me on that. But I agree with you. It's, it's, it's definitely just shit he's doing he's not even realizing can be problematic. Like, I feel like it's just like a conditioning of this is what hyper, hyper, uber strong, cool males are like. And he's like, all right, cool. And he's just like, kind of loves his muscles. Not really like, 
thinking about it. Yeah, he likes muscles, and that's fine. You could like muscles. There's nothing, like like muscles and nothing wrong with muscles like, and punching muscles. and big guns and slow there's motion. Wrong with that. Hey, look, look, listen, listen. There's nothing wrong or those things are cool. I like all but those things. Can, I like all those things too. It's 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 just like I. It's what you said. It's just the context in which those are represented. Like, are you are, are you representing those in like just? It's the five, juxtaposition, like, let's say. Exactly. Like, are are you are you? Are you having all of that whilst also punching down on people or are you just like just having that just for the sake of okay happening? here okay i'll just change the subject for a second here's a really fun example of this here's a really interesting example of this which is the dune movie from from dune. this year so dune 2 right uh -huh. so in the it's a it's an interesting one because you can compare this uh, Xavier, if you actually read Xavier, if you actually read the script that I sent you a while ago, you would know this thesis. Uh, but the the thing is that the eight the eighties Dune and the book, the Baron, the main villain who's played by Stellan Skarsgård in the new one, he mm -hmm. he's a big old big big old gay. A big and gay owl. He's um. He's but and they but they use his queerness as like a shorthand for how evil he is. So it's like, look at this fucking guy. Like, look at how gay he is. Look Darth Ennis likes, has a problem of doing that a lot. Look at how much he likes They're... boys and how much he he's a pedophile and he 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 does all that. One of these things is wrong. Yeah, morally. And, and he uses he uses the character's queerness as shorthand for his evil. Like like he's a gay pedophile. He murders. He loves this. He he uh he he has this um. He has this um. He has this weird incestuous thing with his nephew, and he uh, mm -hmm. murders boys that look like Paul Paul Atreides and. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. But, um. And so, so they 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 present his sort of gayness in a way that uses it as shorthand for his evil. But in the new movie, it's like, yeah, the villain uh, Harkonnen, ba Baron Harkonnen, is gay, but also. That's not what it's not why him. he's evil. It's just and a that's thing. not why he's evil. It's just part of who he is. And we'll see him, you know, smooch his nephew, and it looks weird as hell. But whatever, who cares? It's like it's awesome, and we love it because it's like this 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 sort of brazen yeah. expression of who he is. And that is that scene. You that is on the fucking the, <laughs> the gif. That's what that the context. Yeah, is. literally, like, and it's um. And you can present the same thing in two very different ways, and it's sort of, it's everything is in the context, and the 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 way the camera is framed is not neutral, and the way that you frame the actions can be very good or bad. And Zack Snyder just draws on certain shall we say, homophobic tropes in our culture, and he doesn't examine what those are or perhaps criticize those in a way that would be health. Is that the, is that the eff 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 effeminization and the, the queer codedness of yes. the villains? That, yes. But, okay, yeah. yeah. And, like, we, lo we, wanna, we want there to be effeminate villains. We want there to be queer villains. We don't want to yeah, but don't, like, say that you can't do it. Man. But yeah. don't don't just take it as... Use those things as shortcuts, as shorthand for their evil. Yeah, yeah. Garth Ennis has a very bad problem with doing that in his comics. There's... Basically, anytime he wants to show how evil a character I he is, it's like, and they're also a little bit gay, and they they're it, they're so. It's a difference up between they, I'm evil but also gay, gay versus I am evil because I am I'm, I'm gay because I'm. Evil. In the comic, uh, fucking Homelander has just big wild orgies and will just fuck uh, younger men. Oh, soldier boy. Yeah, well, who's I mean, and that that character is not related to him in the comic. In the comics, so yeah, he's just, he's just yeah, a sidekick, right? He's not even really a sidekick, he's just like another superhero who's kind of Captain America-esque. 
Right. This page one issue. Oh, I'm making yeah. the letters page for my fan comic since issue three is almost done. Nice. How many issues are there going to be? Five. Wow. The first couple pages of issue four are already drawn. I gotta ask Dane if he's gonna get into drawing more soon. How many issues are there gonna be? Five. How many issues do you want there to be? Your mama. What about her? Exactly. Oh, so yeah, asked that, this you is a, uh, so this is spoilers for like a whole whole video essay I was gonna make, and may eventually make at some point, which is, uh, basically just like the the t like, uh, do I watched the '80s Dune and I don't really like it, and I think it it probably is David Lynch's worst movie. Because it's not his right. movie. How much of that is his fault, though? Well, it's... First of all, it's... He should never have directed this movie, because he is... David Lynch is many things, but he is not Denis Villeneuve. He doesn't... This is not in his wheelhouse, making a big action sci-fi movie. You know, none of his other movies have drawn on themes that are anywhere similar to Dune. So it's just... I don't think he'd ever read the book before he met, he was hired to make the movie. And he basically, he, I think he signed like a two picture deal with the producer and said, and was like, yeah, I'll make this for you. And you know, you, you get to make my weird shit after this. So it was just, uh, he just sort of made this as like, a, was made as like a work for hire director. And then yeah. the studio cut a bunch of stuff for the, to make the running time. And they and also like, try to like mandate it to be more Star Wars-y, even though that doesn't fit. I think so as well, and it, it, it was just, it, it, it doesn't work because it's not the type of film that David Lynch really wants to make and excels at making, For so it's a mishmash of director and source material, and it was made worse by studio interference. Well, that's always nice, studio interference. Yeah, that's why... Um, that's why the Marvels is so good. It's, it's funny, I, I started watching BoJack Horseman lately, and I got to, up to the episode last night where... Or episodes, rather, because it's a, it's a whole thing. Where BoJack is, like, wanting to make a movie about, like, his idol. And he wanted to make it super accurate and super, like, close to the thing. But, like, the studio was like, oh, we can't put the scene in, we have to put this other scene in. And, uh... It, it turns into a whole thing, and the movie just, like, the entire fucking premise of the movie, like, what it was supposed to be, just ends up getting changed so fucking much. It just becomes, like, a mindless, soulless, like, corporate product than, like, an actual, heartfelt, genuine... That's how it's, that's movie. how it goes. It's, like, it's it, death by a thousand cuts. Sad. That, that show is deceptively fucking, like, deep, man. Um, because obviously, like, you know, people talk about it now, it's like, oh, it's so deep, blah, blah, blah. Bro, Watching the first couple of episodes, you wouldn't get that fucking impression. Which, like, leads me to think, like, people just weren't aware that that's the kind of show they were in for. Right? Like, like, do you guys not agree? Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm sorry, I, 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 like, zoned out. What, huh? Who are you? Oh, okay, never mind. I, I see you're talking to the, to the people. In yeah, I'm talking to the uh, chat, uh, um, because they're asking. I didn't want to cut off the conversation, but I wanted to, um... Talk to the to the chat. So do the ch are the chat yeah, saying Yeah, Mark anything? Miller has yeah. a lot of anti-gay stuff too. That's pretty <laughs> fucking in your face. It's just uh, a like it's just a trope in our culture that uh, if we want to show that somebody's predatory and uh, preying well, because that that goes back to like the idea that um. And this was so popular in the seventies. Is the gay guys are gonna fuck your kids? Yeah. So you want to if you want to show the bad guy is evil, just make him a little gay, and then it's like, oh, is he is he gonna fuck our kids because he's gay? Um, yes, sir. That, yeah, there's yeah. so many Disney villains that are like that. Like yeah. Scar yeah. is so gay. Yeah. <laughs> Disney villains are all a little bit a little bit like that. 
just cause I guess just cause that's I will still stand by that the Lion King is the, like one of the best fucking Disney movies. Um It is. But I, I can agree to that, yes. Yeah. And and it's not just the Lion King, it's a bunch of them. Um, it's a bunch of them. But it, it feels like that was one of those things they weren't doing on purpose. It was like subconscious, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> just because yeah. that's just like what pop culture was doing at the time. That was just the culture at the time. It's just like, well, how do you make a villain? Oh, make him kind of posh. Make him kind of posh, yeah. effeminate, um, soft-spoken, not particularly masculine. Yeah, and then you know you start to that once you look back on it, it's like, oh. Well, that's unfortunate. But you know what else is particularly nasty? <laughs> that was a really good one. Yep. <laughs> that was a really good one. You may yep, not. Yep. You may not want homophobia in your Zack Snyder movies, but that might be what you're gonna Number get. Number fifteen. Homophobia in Zack Snyder movies. The last thing you want in your Zack Snyder movies is homophobia. But as it turns out, that might be exactly what you get. It has become a controversial point of conversation I can't stop in our modern time with regards to movies and the representation of certain communities. And whether our pants. culture and the habits within are cultivating <laughs> negative <laughs> points of views about certain people in our society, for One example, the LGBTs. <laughs> and I believe, as a result, it He's is vital going. <laughs> to ask ourselves questions that. Oh, Jesus Christ, I have to catch my breath. Ugh. And I lost my train of thought. Damn. It must be hard being that stupid. Baba Booey. <laughs> Gaba Ghoul. God damn it. I hate how often he makes me laugh. Every fucking thing this goddamn guy says is fucking hilarious. And I hate giving them that satisfaction. I don't want him to know that he's funny. I want him to think he sucks. He's That's not the only one that sucks around here. He's thinking of funny here. shit he's saying all the time. Well, I suck, just in a different way. <laughs> uh, suck, talk. Alright, I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom. William was making me laugh so bad, I almost peed myself. <laughs> really? So you're just gonna go pee in the toilet, then? He's already left. He's already left. <laughs> Why did he leave? Because I made him piss himself. Yeah, so he, he needs to get some new underwear? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. People in chat, this is gonna sound out of pocket, but who who is aware of the cocky one boing boing meme that's been going around? Boing boing, who want what? Cocky one boing boing. What, what? Like it's just this dude. It's just this dude on Twitter that like fucking made a tweet. It was like what? at the beach. Where the hoes at? Cocky want boing boing. <laughs> and that shit just has not left my mind since I fucking read it. It's Ooh, such, a, it. such an out of pocket brain rot fucking like thing to say. But I think that's what I love about it. Yeah? So funny. Yeah? Yeah? Welcome back to yeah? the Hello. Cocky want boing <laughs> boing. <laughs> I have Talk returned. Number 10. Returning. Number 10. Burger King boing boing. Burger King boing boing. It is I wish sad. I could kill you guys with a weed whacker. It is said that Burger King boing boing is performed with a weed whacker. In the storage room of a Burger King. Man. It's it's crazy to me that somebody out there speaks like that, just as like the default voice. Like that's just how they are. It's not like an announcer voice, it isn't like a uh 
a performance or anything. It's just this is how they speak. Imagine being really that guy thinking, who has that really voice. Really gets you thinking, like, what, what sort of things would they have to have gone through to where that's how they develop their speaking patterns? Well, they'd have to be a white person, for one. For sure. <laughs> that that already in itself is a disadvantage. <laughs> Being white? Yeah. In our modern Trust day me. and age, it hey, is a disadvantage. I've been white every single day of my life. But you've also been a redhead. And that's yeah. The, yeah, shit, yeah, that too. So like I've got being a lot a red of things going against the... me, honestly. <laughs> being a redhead is like the the new game plus of being white. Yeah. You, you yeah. take you take less damage because you have a higher pain tolerance, but also the the general game difficulty is just higher. Yeah. Oh. I love shit posts, dude. You are a shit post. And I love that about it. Oh yeah, uh, we were gonna talk about Monkey Man way back, so I was. I was, I was at the beginning say, of the stream. Yeah, that was like fucking an hour ago. I was waiting to talk about that, but then you just talked about other what stuff. So, I, so you, we we shifted the conversation. The, the but... Dev Patel action movie Monkey Man. So it's super cool, but it's it's not quite what you were expecting, because well, I would say first of all, it's um very. It's a lot slower than you would expect because there's really only two big action set pieces in it. Yeah. Um, versus like the last John Wick movie that had like fucking ten action scenes, and I got so sick of it. So mm -hmm. I would say the thing about uh, Monkey Man is that it's it's almost more. It has, it's more interesting for what it doesn't have in common with uh, yeah. John Wick than what it does have in common with John Wick, which okay. is to say it's a lot more street level, a lot more yeah. grounded, and it's a lot John more... John Wick exists in like this like slick kind of fictional world full of assassins. And it's also very literal and... Um, it talks about things like a lot more honestly and frankly than John Wick does because it's like, yeah, I made this action movie about sectarian violence and how uh, uh, the, these specific political problems with Indi in Indian politics today are bad and it talks about like literal political issues and one of my favorite things is that it has this there's this bit where, um, so the the one of the, the main villain is like a religious leader, who who's like a guru who kicked our main character off his like parents' land to build his complex that was also built by slave labor, and uh, and they they he like supports the 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 guy who's going to become the president of India who's whose whole deal is, like, who's basically a thinly veiled uh, allegory for the literal president of India right now. And they, they, they in post, because they were kind of scared of pissing off that, that guy, they recolored the flags in, like, the election scenes in the background from the color of the literal president of India and his political party, which is orange, to red. Huh. And also, the other thing, like, if you're talking about it from, like, an action cinema perspective, is that Dev Patel gets his ass kicked in that movie so much and so many times. That's what's cool about it, though, is you want your character to feel human, so it's more impressive when he wins. But, like... If he gets his ass kicked constantly, but still wins anyway by just, like, being too tough to die but yeah that's more a, interesting but than a guy a, who's just indestructible but the difference is that like when they did that in uh 
like the most recent John Wick movie, John Wick Four, which I did not care for personally. Oh really? Um, he it's almost like they do it like almost like. He's almost too invincible, where he gets kicked and he constantly gets knocked down, but then he he 